Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chief Chase Billadu with the Town of the Police Department, and I'm honored to be your MC for today's 9-11 commemoration. I would like to welcome all of you here today, as well as all of you watching this event from home on this very special day of remembrance. The posting of the colors will be done by the 174th Honor Guard, and singing the Star Spangled Banner will be Dominic Camberary. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Thank you, Dominic. Leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance will be Gabriel Collins, a junior student with the Jamesville DeWitt School. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you, Gabriel. Our invocation will be done by Onondaga County Sheriff's Police Chaplain, Reverend Michael Grenells. Thank you, Chief. Would you John, join me in prayer or meditation, whatever is comfortable for you? Always remember to forget the things that made you sad, but never forget to remember the things that make you glad. Always remember to forget the friends 
who proved untrue, but never forget to remember those who stuck by you. Please join me in prayer or meditation. Spirit of humanity, we come here to remember those who incidentally and accidentally gave their full measure of life by dying at the hands of evil. At the same time, we renounce the very evil that brings us here today. Help us to know your mysteries and make it possible to grasp the enormity of their sacrifice. You strengthen us in joy and sadness. You build us up by the people around us. You bless this ceremony, invoking us a new resolve for inclusion, peace, justice, and a wholesome way of life. Amen. Please be seated. Our first guest speaker will be Congressman John Katko. Good afternoon, everybody. Earlier this week, I spent a couple days in uh, New York City at Ground Zero, and we were at the firefighters, went to firefighters headquarters, where there was a plaque for 343 firefighters who were killed on that day. I went to New York Police Headquarters when there was a commemoration of the folks killed that day from the police department as well. We had a hearing and talked about what we need to do going forward. But uh, prob probably the most powerful thing I did was have lunch at Squad 18, small fire department down in, uh, near, the, near the World Trade Center. Uh, on an average day, there are six firefighters there. And they go out and there's only one engine at the same building since 1800s. And on that fateful day, 20 years ago, it was a change of shift, so there's 12 there. They all raced to the World Trade Center. Many of them knew they would never come home. And of the 12 that went, seven died that day. And they died running to the, running to the danger and running to the fire and running to the mayhem that was the World Trade Center. They walked up the steps to get people out. And the miraculous that people don't realize this, there's 25,000 people in the building that day. 90% of them survived, which is incredible. More than 90%. But they found two of the firemen from Squad 18 that day. And they were, their bodies were intertwined. They had hugged, hugging each other's because they must have known as the building started coming down that their day was done. And so they gave each other comfort in the last seconds of their lives. That's what 9-11 is about to me. It's a sacrifice that they made for our country. And we now have a whole generation of children we don't remember anything about 9-11 because they weren't, a lot, they weren't born then. And it's really up to us to make sure that we carry on these traditions and carry on these commemorations. It's up to me my job in the Homeland Security Committee to do all I can to make sure this country never sees something like that happen again. It's a high honor and high responsibility. But let us never forget those brave men and women who willingly gave their lives so that others might live. And that's what this is all about. So when I look at that flag today, I'm thinking of them. God bless you. Thank you, Congressman. Our next guest speaker will be New York State Senator John Mannion. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon, everyone. We must never forget the horrors of September 11, 2001 and our eternal obligations to the family of the victims. This is a day of remembrance and a day of respect. It is a moment for unity for our country and a reminder that we are all Americans. I stood in a classroom on September 11, 2001 Watch the faces of a bunch of 16-year-olds and the emotions that poured over them. And one of those emotions was uncertainty. 
Well, the fact that we can all stand here today, united as Americans, is a testament to our leadership, our commitment to the American cause, and our servicemen and women that we have made it where we are today. After 20 years, what are the lessons of 9-11? For me, it's found in the words of Janet Dahl, whose husband Jason was the pilot on Flight 93. Janet said, if we learn nothing else from this tragedy, we learn that life is short and there is no room for hate. I'm honored to spend this solemn day standing shoulder to shoulder with the Central New York heroes who put their lives on the line every day to keep our community safe. I cannot express my thanks enough to the police officers, firefighters, first responders, emergency personnel, active duty members of the military, and veterans from across Central New York. We honor your service and sacrifice today and every day as we should. I wish you all the peace, good health, and happiness. God bless America, and thank you. Thank you, Senator Mannion. Our final guest speaker will be New York State Assembly member Pamela Hunter. Good afternoon. I come to you today as your assembly member, but also as an armed service veteran of the United States Army. Uh, this has obviously been a very tough time for everyone, uh, especially for fellow veterans um, from the withdrawal from Afghanistan. As our nation mourns and remembers those that are, are lost, please don't forget our friends and neighbors that are suffering from that loss, whether a spouse, or a sibling or child, and maybe even a son or daughter that never had the opportunity to meet their lost family member. We've heard of so many young people and the, the congressman just mentioned um, who weren't even born on 9-11 and their, their mother or father uh, was gone, never had an opportunity to meet them. 20 years may seem like forever ago to some, but just yesterday, for those who have lost a loved one or survived the tragedy, our first responder heroes who are here today and, and armed forces who have served to protect the United States. Since our uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan, I have received countless reach outs from those that are troubled, suffering from PTSD and have inconsolable grief. To my fellow veterans, armed service members, firefighters. Your service is valued and your experience through this conflict will not be diminished. Hug and care your, hug and care for your loved ones today. We are stronger together. Thankful for the contributions to those that protect us. All gave some and some gave off. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblymember Hunter. Our wreath presentation will be done by our event chair, Joe Chiarenza and family. The Rowan Tree will be played by bagpiper Jack Hines.
And now Joe Chiarenza, Town Councilor, 9-11 Committee Chair, would like to say a few words. A beautiful day for us all to reflect and come together. I'd like to thank the East Syracuse Fire Department, the DeWitt Fire Department, Town of DeWitt Police Chief Bilodeau, and our Stower Police Department. All the EMS personnel and the tiny enough to join us this afternoon. How do you say thank you? Well, it's hard to believe that today marks 20 years and the tragic events of the enduring legacy of September 11, 2001, a time that nearly left 3,000 innocent U.S. citizens dead. The recent evacuation of our military mission in Afghanistan is a clear reminder of how the event changed our lives forever. As our country comes to grips with the tumultuous exit of U.S. military forces from Afghanistan, today we can pray and thank the brave men and women who serve us in spirit for our great patriotism for this country. The importance of 9-11 transcends age, gender, and political differences as over the past 20 years. Americans have shown sense of shared sense of spirit and public unity. For most often of us who are even old enough to remember 9-11, it's a day that is impossible for us to forget. The day that reshaped how we think of war, peace, and our own personal safety at home. So let us continue to support and pray for our brave men and women to protect us and serve in our military, our police officers, our EMS, personnel, and all the others that serve our country bravely. The motto of 9-11 has been never forget, and a gathering like this one all over the country. We provide again that we will never, ever will, and God bless all those who we lost 20 years ago, and God bless America. Thank you very much for today. Thank you, Joe. And now for our rifle salute by the DeWitt Police Honor Guard. Taps will be played by Dan Andrianos. An amazing grace will be played by bagpiper Jack Hines.
Dominic Cambrari will now sing America the Beautiful. Thank you, Dominic. Again, please be seated. Our closing remarks will be made by Onondaga County Sheriff Eugene Conway. As daylight turns to dust, and as today inches toward tomorrow, the spirit of our freedom, the courage, the bravery, and selfless acts of humanity will forever stay ingrained, certainly in our minds and hopefully in our hearts as well. This memorial, a piece of history, was brought here to help us never forget. And those who are responsible should also never be forgotten, just as the smallest act of service the simplest act of kindness is a way to honor those we lost, a way to reclaim that spirit of unity that followed that tragic day. Thank you, Sheriff Conway. The Town of Duet and the 9-11 Committee I'd like to thank the veterans in attendance and those watching today's ceremony and all the members of our military and branches past and present for their service to our country. We would also like to give a special thanks to the Suburban Garden Club who maintain the garden around the memorial. They donate about 150 volunteer hours every day. Thank you. And now for our benediction. Reverend Gunnels. exactly the same weather as it was on that day. It's striking that we're here under those circumstances. 
So if you would uh, be so kind as to join me in a prayer or a meditation, whatever is comfortable for you. The power of the universe, we ask that you bless us. We ask that you keep us and shine your face upon us and be gracious to us as well. The one who is the one turns a face towards each of us and gives us peace. The road rises to meet us. The wind forever blows. The sunshine is warm and the rain falls on our fields to provide for us. The divinity will offer each of us traveling mercies in this day and will hold each of us in the palm of their hands for eternity. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Again, thank you, everyone, for coming. Please have a good evening.